Okay, it's got down two that we already fixed. This one and this one. This one's a helical already, but it's not drilled very deep either, so I have to go drill it deeper. Oh, it's 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 deep in there. There's a helical in there. She set deep. There. That's the helical. There's already one in there. I need to set another on it. Why deep? is it screwed up all the way in there? The thread like it's not even done right. Something wrong with it. I wish I could blame it on somebody else. It's me. Okay, so when I got this one and this one you gotta deal with. Okay. Let's get a towel wrapped over this so the chips don't go in a chain. Okay. Sure we got extra towels floating around here. They're all over the place. Really okay. So we need a little drill motor or what do we got to play with here? Yeah. This one. I get to have the heat of coal out first, and then I'll drill deeper and tap it and do all that. I think I, I tapped it all the way deep. I think I we don't know. We're going to find out. Right. How do we get it out? We've got to bend the tab out. So you hold it. You work the camera. Okay. Okay, I'll the camera do this job. Okay, you got a little sample length heat of coils. Why don't you buy a long heat of coils? Mm. If I knew I could buy bigger ones, I didn't know they came in different sizes. I use two and a half, two, two and a half, and three diameters. You know what that means? That means these are, what are these, like quarter? <laughs> <clears throat> these are probably one diameter just above it. These are really short, these are one diameter probably. It's a quarter inch bolt, quarter inch long is one diameter. Okay, all right. Half inch long is two diameter. Two diameter, right. Three quarter inch long is three diameters. 2.5 diameter is five eighths of an inch. I like one of the five eighths and three quarters. Seven sixteenths is a normal helicoil. These aren't even that, these are like three eighths, seven. These are five sixteenths, probably pretty short. So these are very, very sample size. So, See how the seal coil is made? Got the tang on it? Got to blow it up to look at it. Or get close to the camera. Your choice. So, this is where the tang is. You break off is right here. You hit this with a screwdriver. Fucking hook. Hard to point with a bad hook. If you hit right here on a tip, it just bends it. If you hit it right here, it snaps it off. Because it has to bend right here to break it. So this thing just kind of bends up like this and mm -hmm. snaps it off. If you hit it over here, it just bends it like that and it doesn't break off. Got to get it at the base. You got to get in there, grab this with a pliers or pick and it, jiggle one until it falls out, pain in the ass. Just hit it across the base right here is fine. Now to get the helicoil out, you have to take it and bend it to make like a tang. And then you can put your, your needle nose in there and grab a hold of it and unscrew it. So that's what we're going to do to get it out. So basically we're going to take your thing here and find a hook. So, put it there. Where's your helical end at? It's a whole lot deeper than that. I can see it from here. There you go. It's way in it's there. Like, yep. Jeez. That's what I'm saying. Can we stick another just right on top of it? Because you're going to have to stack them no matter what, right? How would you have it in there that deep? So that's what I'm looking at, is a helical yes, way to fucking... Yes, that's the one that I ran. So I drilled and tapped it, and obviously... So why'd you run it in so deep? Because I'm really tired. All right, so you got six threads uh, sticking out, so that's a helical. Okay, so in this situation, you just... You go in and shorten as needed. <clears throat> so go, go grab my red handle dikes over there. Tool. Function is not currently available. I did something. There we go. All right. I think we're okay. Still. So we have we break off that tang. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What did you want over here? Red handle dice. So we got six and a half threads. We got six and a half threads. And you Close to that. Not sure exactly how many you have. So, so to shorten a helical, you stick a pair of dikes, a good set like this one. 
You go right on the edge of that sucker you want to cut it. And you go clip. Now this is going to grow in length as it goes in because it collapses as a big spring. So we don't know how deep this is, so let's just find out what we got to work with here. It's basically the same length right now. You want to have at least one thread in there before you have it where it grabs. So I'm going to start by cutting one of these off. See that heavy coil? This thing's only a snap and cut right off instantly. You don't even cut them. What the hell is going on with this thing? for your girlfriend. Oh, thank you. Okay, I just got shorter. Put your installation to here. You got a little screwdriver, or I mean a tiny crescent. If not, there's one in my bucket over there. In my bucket, three inch. <clears throat> That's a little crescent wrench. You know why you use a little one? You got more control. Okay, the helical, you got to put pressure on the helical, not the tool to get in the hole. See, it's crossed there and it's not going in. This is a maple leaf tool. Would you say that again? You have to put pressure on the Healy coil and not the, t the tool? Correct. Explain that to me. My brain's not wrapping. This is a spring. It has to collapse. So, this first thread right here, you have to jam it into the thread that you cut. If you push on the tool, it just pushes on that tang right there and makes the thread coarser oh. than what you need it to be. Okay. If you push on the coil here, it collapses, it's solid, so it's actually less threads per inch mm -hmm. by a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Once the first thread gets in there, it automatically It'll shuts, spread it, it so. spreads it right. as it goes. If you push on the center, it just cross threads it right on in there. Okay. It augers right in, screws everything all up. Okay. So that's why you don't want to ever push on the center middle part, you want to push on the outside, shove it in. Okay. You have to figure out where that first thread is, because it takes a lot of force to collapse this first spring down, because that's what holds it in, is that spring tension. So you kind of feel it kind of binding a little bit. And you first thought it's kind of like cross threaded. You know, it took the wrench and shoved it down. Mm -hmm. That's because it's cross threading. So I held it back up square, just like we did before when we drove out of the hole. And you, you do it right. You know, it's just like that tap. Mm -hmm. You got to hold it in the right spot to make it work. This tool is like we got a maple leaf with a little small shank on. I've never seen stuff so small. This is half the size of my dad's kid is. So this little dinky stuff just makes it even harder to do the job. I don't know why they do this, but that's what they do. Okay, I just touched the other heater coil. Okay. It's below the surface, about half a thread to one maybe. So I cut it, if I didn't cut it, it would have been sticking up. If it sticks up, if it doesn't tighten against the aluminum, it tightens up against the heater coil, which means it doesn't get tight. Okay, now you need a little small, 
screwdriver or something to bang against to pop the heater coil. So what do you got that's bigger than this but small enough to go inside that quarter inch hole? And I need a little hammer or something to beat on. Okay, and the tank is up high. How's this make it go inside? If it fits in a hole, I don't care. Okay. So, there's the helical tang up in there. See how you got a gap in the bottom? It's, it's up against the top. So the top is where you want to break it off. Where's that screwdriver at? So you take this screwdriver here and you push it in. And you put it in an angle and you, you catch on the top, not on the bottom like that. And you just line it up and it'll snap. With a little just hit it really hard with a pair of a plier or your palm of your hand if you want to make your hand hurt. So you, just, you know where the turning is. You go until you touch it and go like that. And it should have popped it. Doesn't feel correct in there though. Okay, that, that's, it's laying in there. It's jamming in there as I was getting in. And now you can get that damn thing out of there. So that's done with the air nozzle. The air nozzle again. <clears throat> now whatever we do, we want to find this tang. So it needs to come out of this hole for sure that we can see. Or we can go hunt for it. So if you hit the hole at an angle, it might blow the air out. Ready? I heard it. I heard something. I didn't see it, but I heard it behind me. Yeah, I heard it. It landed over here somewhere. So as long as I heard it over there, I don't care. I just want it in the body. I don't want this chain. You think it's in that primary chain? You don't think it can break that chain. It'll damage it. So now you just got to look in the hole and make sure there's nothing in the hole. <clears throat> so you just got to look inside there as far as you can see, and hopefully there's nothing in there. There's no tang in there for sure, but. This camera I can't see because it's not made for doing what I need to do. Here you go. I take my flashlight like this and look up in there. I look for anything that looks like it might be a tang. And then you go in there and you pick in there and make sure there's nothing in there. You see that raw hole up in there. Doesn't feel like there's anything important in there. Feels alright. Now you take a and then our bolt, and if you do it right, it'll go all the way through without having a problem. Now if you cross threaded it, it's not going to go any further than a couple turns. See it's catching the next one. It's not going. See, I don't know what you have in there for a heat coil. Same money came out of the same package. No, it's not going in. I stack them up hundreds of them, they go right in, no problem. This one here. It gets the first one. And it's tight, see? Yeah. If you keep forcing, it's going to break, break something. something. Yep. Yeah, it's horrible. You see how it's chewing up in a thread? Because it's not happy. It's like it's a different thread or something. You know what? And you cannot put a tap in the, the helical hole. Hmm. Can't see anything in there, but it's, something's different, obviously. I don't know if you heat a coal that you cross thread going into it. Didn't seem like the hole was bad, so I'm not, I don't think that happened, but I don't know why it didn't, didn't line up right now. Yeah. Because they just, they just screw and touch the other side, they just stop. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's the same thread. Right. <clears throat> so, but whatever it is, they don't like it. 
This 100% stops running that thread. It's just going to tear things up. And when they're that deep inside to unscrew them, it's, you got to get in there and knock the damn thing up. And you don't have tools here to do that with. You have to have a, a pick. It's called a super punch. It's just a long pick, real long one, but mm -hmm. real small. Yep. Beat on the hammer, and you get on there and stick it in there a half inch, and you it leverage it up on it, come at an angle, and hit it, and you'll get on that tank, bend it up, and you can pull the damn thing out. But when you're in there, you know, you just put a screwdriver and hold on screw with a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. As long as that tang is there, it does nothing to dig in, it just unscrews. Okay. But um, you don't have that, so. Um, well, let's talk about this. How deep was it trying to go? We may not need to go threads all the way deep. If that's a shorter one, by the time we go through the primary, we may still be okay, right? Well, I'm only going to go into the thickness of that first sheet of coil. How deep are you? That's probably not deep enough, right? Uh, well, well, if you want to shorten a bolt, it is, but I don't know. I mean, we can't we can't spend a couple hours on this. This is going to have to be a problem that I have to chase. You know what I'm saying? We you have to have the right tool. You don't have the tools here. Yeah. So. Either way, let's do this. I couldn't, when I put it in, I couldn't even touch me, those threads I'm gonna, before. I'm going to get my caliper so I can measure something or a stick or something. There's a six inch scale over there and a damn caliper. You ask me a question, i got to measure it. Right, it's all the way to the right. I have to have my tools to measure with. I Is can't just eyeball everything. I can't eyeball it, but it's, I gotta, it's better if I have an accurate dimension. Okay, we have 835. Okay. Here. So if you're 835, it's fine, but you're not 835. 1 400. 800 thousands. No, it's right here, it's this one. I'm measuring this one. It's 590. Flip it over. These are all the same. Here's the thick ones over here, but they're not this thick. I don't know. So, that one gives you about a half inch stick through. It's about the same as this one. Yep. Thicker than 800, so it's 900. So it could work on that one. Come on, let's get lucky. Heist boys get lucky every once in a while. Okay, let's cover up there. No, no.